Welcome back to another edition of Talking Out Loud. I'm your host, Travis Beck. I'm going to try to talk slower this time. Uh, number one, so the artificial intelligence subtitle generator can keep up with me. And number two, so I don't sound like a fucking slurring, drunken asshole. <sighs> Deep breaths are good, Trav. Deep breaths are good. <sighs> try to breathe from that abdomen, you know, and then then the chest, like Wim Hof. I've been doing breathing exercises. I'm trying to fit in with Los Angeles more during quarantine, you know, trying to just be healthy uh, without actually doing anything that, uh, that requires physical exertion. You know what I mean? Okay, so episode four. Sorry it's been so long. Uh, it's been two weeks. I, I admit it. I, I didn't drop the ball. I've been busy actually writing this cool sort of sci-fi romance script with my friend Doug Hanna. Shout out to Doug Hanna. He's never going to watch this, but if he does, what up, dog? Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's a cool script that, uh, we've kind of been, you know, developing for a while now. And, uh, it's basically about, um, this kid who is, no, I can't tell you what it's about because then you'll steal my idea. I can't tell you. Sorry. Someone out there, my 28, 29 followers, they're going to hear it and they're going to be like, holy shit, that's a brilliant idea. I could make trillions of dollars off of that, especially in Corona, right? Everyone's making movies now. Not true. So I'm, uh, I'm doing the podcast in my living room because my roommates are all gone. It's my house. It's my fucking house, <gasps> bitch. Get my way. Hey. I'm going to walk around naked. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to just put weird things in odd places. You wouldn't normally see a, a chair there, but but there's a chair there now. You know what I mean? I just like to get creative in my off time, you know? And when I'm alone, sometimes I get caught up in my thoughts, in my, my emotions, and then they sort of, they rule me like some sort of, yeah, I just, I can't, you know, it's all this pressure, and I just, <laughs> and I don't know what to do, and I can't do anything, and I have to just be paralyzed with my thoughts and actions instead of just getting out there in the world. <sighs> oh, man. It's important to reach out, guys. Um, it's fucking three months worth of quarantine, okay? Domestic abuse is up. Suicide is up. Mental health is already a crisis before corona, Okay. It's basically like a double whammy for people with depression right now. It's like double depression now. I was already fucking depressed. Then you take away my job and all these fun things and my friends. Now I can't do anything. I got to stay at home. My fucking shitty house. Now hopefully you have a cool house or apartment or whatever. But you know what I mean. Oh, man, I've been bugging a friend of mine the other day. He wasn't uh, answering my calls. One of my best friends. And then I knew it was just because he was probably depressed or just, you know whatever. And so I called his girlfriend and then I called his roommate and then he finally called me back and he's like, dude, what the fuck? He didn't say that. He was like, Hey buddy, <coughs> you know, people are depressed. It's important to reach out to your friends now, family, loved ones, uh, not ex-girlfriends. Fuck them. They left you. It's their loss. Um, people you care about, reach out to them, let them know that, Hey man, you're important. You matter. I love you. Uh, this is this is the difference between um, life and death, basically, because it's what? It's the people that, that don't reach out that end up killing themselves, right? Like, real fucking talk. Uh, you know what I've actually been thinking about doing is uh, doing the suicide hotline. My friend Liz Vasky, uh, my ex-girlfriend, the lovely Liz Vasky. I don't know if she watches this. She does that. Takes a big heart. Big fucking heart. And a smart person to do that, a strong person. Uh, I want to do that. I feel like there's probably a need for that now, right? Fucking just um, crisis hotline, you know? But uh, no joke. Um, reach out to the people you love. I mean, hopefully you've been FaceTiming more during quarantine than you have uh, in real life. Or I know I have. I didn't really do it much in real life. But, like, 
just important to reach out and check in during this moment of isolation, you know, this, this, this phase that we're going through, which hopefully ends by the summer, doesn't go all summer, maybe part of the summer, but fuck, man, shit is crazy, and it's just life's too short not to reach out to your friends and be like, yo, man, I'm embarrassed, I'm a grown-ass man, woman, or, you know, whatever, I'm depressed, I'm angry, I'm confused, I'm scared, I'm worried. Like, just fucking talk to someone. Please don't just play video games and watch TV and fucking smoke weed and get drunk and just repress all that, put it all inside. God, God, I don't want to feel it. It hurts me. Hurts me. I know all about numbing feelings, okay? You want to talk about numbing? Let's talk about numbing, okay? No, but for real, shit's bad. You want to hear the stats real quick? Unemployment is expected to peak at around 25 to 30% in America. 30%. 45% of Los Angelinos are employed currently. 45% are employed. So 55% are unemployed here in LA. Uh, that was a poll by USC in April. There's 60,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. They need a place to go to, especially in Corona. They're talking about putting them in hotels, which I think would be fucking awesome. I hope they do that. There's tens of thousands of vacant hotel rooms right now. Not being used, can't be used, don't want to be used by most people that would use them. You know who would take them? Homeless people, at least some of them, at least 15,000 of them. I hope Gavin Newsom's thing goes through. That would be great. Trying to, he's trying to put 15,000 people in uh, empty hotel rooms, which would be incredible, even though it's only a temporary thing. Why not, dude? Fuck it. We got we to gotta pull out all the stops right now, dude. I didn't mean to do that. That was very graphic. It looked like, I'm not going to say what it looked like. Um, we have to pull out all the stops. You know what I mean? This is a fucking crisis, and I'm not pretending to know what to do, but I know what not to do, and that's ignore it fucking ignore it but that's just cool that's almost similar to like george carlin's old joke where he's like i have a cure for the homeless i know where we where, where we could put them you know um golf courses just put them on the golf courses plenty of room you know and then he went on a big rant about golf being a you know a rich white person sport and all that which he's totally right anyway um i hope you guys are doing well hope you're doing uh hope you're safe um they're saying that one third of restaurants could go away in los angeles this is a food haven a restaurant haven as you know third of them could go away probably ma and pa type one small businesses you know that really can't weather the storm this fucking incredible ridiculous storm amoeba music is has a gofundme amoeba and there's just Chateau Marmont laid up, laid off all their staff and just tons of people have been laid off. I was laid off. I'm nine weeks, nine weeks now unemployed. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know why if I was like super fucking rich, right? Say I had like 20 mil, 30 mil. And it's like, you're just chilling. Maybe you're 55, 60. And you're like, oh yeah, I'll give like some of it to my kids. And But you got some to spend, all right? And it's like, oh, my favorite restaurant's going under. Why don't you just, just dip in? Just take a dip in, give them a mill, and uh, make sure your favorite restaurant stays open. It's, a, it's an investment, really. It could, you could be a partner and, you know, get money later, maybe. Um, that's what I would do. You know, if I was a billionaire, fuck. Come on. Just all your favorite restaurants, Elon. Just prop them up. Don't let them go away. You want to eat those, don't there? Don't you? can't talk man i didn't warm up for this man i hope you guys liked my new animation uh at the beginning of the show that was made by sarah no Wuchi baby she's fucking cool as fuck met her through a group of musicians um that are in a band called that kid is you here in los angeles in zeno so represent they're cool she's awesome she's basically animating photos as a little side hustle right now so if you want a photo animated of yourself for way less than what it's actually worth. Hit her up, Woochie Baby, at Woochie Baby. Um, really cool. Very, very happy about that. Thank you, Sarah. 
very happy, satisfied with just me looking creepy um, and my eyes being just torn out and replaced with a galaxy. And the depth is sort of unmeasurable because it's so deep. And you're in this other dimension and it's like, what's happening? He's smiling. He's gone. His head came off. Holy shit, there's cat hands. They're dancing? Are they dancing? I realize my time may be over. Or it may be just beginning. Maybe it hasn't even started yet. But I mean, generally, my kind, you know, yes, the white male cisgender. My time is over. That's what two females told me once. Two females that I met at a bar here in Los Angeles at a jazz bar, Italian place, right down the street from my house. They're friends. And yeah, they both told me separately. <laughs> They're like, cool, yeah, you're a, you're a comedian? Sweet. Oh, yeah. You like to do stand-up? Cool. Um, you know your time is over, right? Like, and this is like pre-Me Too. Or like, I think right when it started. I don't know. It was like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, I was kind of taken aback a little bit. I was like, yeah, yeah? Ha, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, I wasn't going to argue with them. I knew what they meant, right? But took a little offense to it. But I try not to take things personal, you know, because I uh, like to live my life according to the four agreements, which uh, I, I touched on in a previous episode of this podcast. You could check it out on my YouTube channel, which is Comedy Water. Uh, Comedy Water on the YouTube, you will find the treasure trove of videos that is my portfolio. It's a very, very sad portfolio. But you know what? Fuck it. It's better than nothing. So fuck you. All right? Um, They said Hollywood might you lose $20 billion? Or if this persists into the summer, $40 billion? All the movies that were going to come out just aren't going to come out. Isn't that crazy? This is so fucking insane. It's so fucking crazy. <sighs> so crazy. But I'm very fortunate that I can live off the government. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, no, I have some savings, too, that I'm burning through rapidly. But also, I'm getting the state the state unemployment with the federal unemployment, okay? Combined, it's very beautiful. I'm very thankful. I'm nearly making what I was making when I had an actual job and worked my ass off 12 hours a day, five days a week for almost what I'm making now on unemployment. It's kind of a mind fuck, right? It's not going to, don't worry. It's not going to demotivate me. Okay. But fuck. Wish I could make a fucking thousand dollars a week doing this podcast. Can you imagine? I'd actually make it good then. We're going to go live into the field now because I felt like we should just get out of quarantine. You know, I've been isolated and needed to get out of the house. So I went for a drive and um, took a little field recording of me in the river in Ojai, California. So we're going to go there now and uh, check in. So, uh, Travis, how are we doing out there? Hey, Travis, great to hear from you. Um, I'm here in the river near Ventura County. Uh, I'm actually near Ojai, actually. I don't know how to spell it. I think it's O-J-A-I-H. The last H is silent. I'm reporting live here in the river, and uh, it's it's really fucking nice outside. The sun finally came out, and this water's actually warm. It's got to be 60 degrees or something. It's kind of amazing. I actually wish it was a little colder, you know? Can't complain. Filled up a cool. tank of gas. Cool. Drove out here. Had to escape my annoying roommate. Um, what else? It's pretty much sunny skies. It was partially cloudy That's earlier, great. but not anymore. That's great. The thing is, you need to ask yourself, are you more Perfect. of a mostly sunny type of person, or are you a awesome. partly cloudy type of person? Travis, that's what you need to ask yourself. That's okay? great. That's great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. That. Thank you. Oh, it's gonna float you be careful out me. there. Oh. Wash your hands. Anyway, I gotta go, Jim. Yeah. See you later. Okay, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> reporting live from the field, that was, uh, that was Rick. And uh, he um, doesn't work for me. He's a freelancer. He's an independent contractor. I don't give him benefits of any kind. He's not on payroll. 
I don't have a paper trail or any really sort of relationship with him professionally or personally. But I figured we needed to like have a sort of live dispatch from the field, so I hired him for this one. If you've never taken acid or mushrooms, psychedelics, I highly recommend you do at some point. Some point when you're young. Um, it's uh, psychedelics are one of the few drugs where you actually learn something, right? You can actually learn something from a mushroom trip, from an acid trip, from getting really high on marijuana. Um, you don't learn much on cocaine or heroin or getting drunk on alcohol. You learn what not to do. Oh, I learned what not to do, but not what and how and how things are connected. And oh my gosh, I mean, you have no idea. My first acid trip was so insane. I got a buddy that can get some acid. I'm probably gonna get some soon and do some and like experiment with microdosing and just sort of maybe you trip hard once, but then just microdose or maybe just microdose the whole time. Maybe I'll put it on my hand you know, and then shake people's hands, even though you're not shaking hands now, and transfer to them. Uh, no, I think that's murder. It's manslaughter, I think. It's considered manslaughter. Anyway, uh, my first acid trip was incredible. It was in 2007. And, uh, man, I gotta say, I mean, most people's first acid trips probably aren't amazing or as incredible as mine, but mine was incredible. We were in Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado in the United States of America. Uh, and uh, it was, we, we, <laughs> we dropped a hit each at 7 a.m. I was 19 years old and I was with my friend's dad, Mark. Shout out to Mark, you're the fucking man. He was like a deadhead, you know, spiritual, super smart guy that like was experienced with, you know, psychedelics and had, you know, had things to teach us about how to do it safely and all that. And uh, he was like the spiritual guide and it was great. It was this very beautiful, very beautiful thing. And so we went hiking on acid and it was, it was great. I remember packing sandwiches before we went and, you know, they were normal. Normal sandwiches, like delicious, and then, but once we got like really high in altitude and also high in our mind, um, I remember grabbing the, the sandwiches and they were like just like slimy and <laughs> like sludgy and just like, oh, like they were no longer normal. Like the moisture from the tomato or something had just in the altitude, and I don't know, they were just like this big ball of like mush, but it was still good and delicious and healthy. and. I just remember like forcing myself to eat it like high as fuck on acid. But before then it was like, it was a lot of fun, you know, it was, I mean, the whole thing was fun, but it was, uh, I felt like I had per perfect balance, you know, with nature, perfect balance. I was, I mean, I was with a friend, um, Ian, Ian Agenberger, and, uh, <laughs> you know, he, uh, he was, he was, I don't think he had hiked much before then. Not really, and, and we kind of went on a hardcore hike, and then he was on acid. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I think he was kind of okay on the way up, you know, he was a little slow. Had like his mandolin or something was playing, you know. And it was cool. Um, then we had lunch, and then found this amazing oasis with where there's like grass on boulders, and then water flowing beneath. And you could hear it, and it was just incredible. That's where we had our lunch. And I, had, I remember just jumping off boulders into the grass and like I had perfect balance and kind of freaking out Ian a little bit. And he was like, oh, what are you doing? Don't jump. Ah. And I was like, dude, it's fine. I'm like, I have perfect balance right now. It's fine. And then we went down the mountain. That's when it started to get hairy for Ian a little bit. He, I think he eventually just went down on his butt, on his ass, just ass down the mountain one step at a time. Do what you got to do to feel safe. I was like jumping and shit, freaking him out, jumping towards him, near him, on purpose, sometimes not on purpose, but generally having a great time, you know, on going down the mountain. Uh, I remember like when we finally got through the wilderness, you know, cause we went off trail, right? And we're like climbing huge boulders and like on acid. And it was just amazing. Like how did this 
get here and blah, blah, blah. And then my, I remember my friend's dad, Mark, saying, you know, what's even more amazing is thinking how we got here to appreciate how this shit got here. That's what's really amazing. I'm like, oh, yeah, holy shit. Just like a layer, just a, an onion full of layers, you know? And it, uh, we got down to civilization and just like fucking ran through these like crowds of people that were just sort of normal and we I just remember feeling like out of my mind but uh comfortable you know and acid I feel like I feel like I prefer acid acid now I've only done it maybe you know I, I have some friends that are like they've done acid like 80 times or something crazy you know and I knew one guy that ended up blowing his brains out that did too much acid I think um but honestly, it just depends on your mental state and, and your brain, and it's so fucking individualistic. It, it's so, just like weed. Weed affects everyone differently, so does acid and all the drugs, but... Like, I have a friend that's super fucking smart named Bob, and he's like a writer and a teacher, and he's like prolific and just fucking super cool and fun to talk to, and he did like tons of acid in the 90s. Like 90 hits total or something. Actually, way more than that, but you know. And he's fine. I've, I've done it like 10 times, maybe. Maybe less. Um, but uh, some people can just do it a few times and freak out, so it's risky. <laughs> uh, moral of the story is don't do it. No, you should do it. You just got to be in the right place mentally. So you don't want to do it if uh, you've had sort of like a dramatic last couple weeks or something like that. You know? um, but Corona, if you're stuck at home and you like your house and you have good music and records, why not just microdose a little bit, you know? I think it's cool. I recommend it. Travis Beck recommends that you take acid at home during Corona and just um, vibe out. Look at the stars. Contemplate who you are, why you're here, what you have to offer everyone else. Maybe nothing. And that's fine, but you need to figure that out. Oh, man, it's like the worst podcast ever. 26 minutes in. I suppose I should just maybe start. I don't know. I don't necessarily want to do that, you know? Fuck that. I'm talking in my head to my other self now. Do you ever hear like a voice in your head that's like, fuck you? <laughs> and you're like, what? Fuck you, dude. I'm not going to listen to you. No, just me. That's fine. I don't care. Oh, yeah. Last time I did acid, um, that was in 2007, the first time I did it. So, fuck, 13 years now. Last time I did acid, I think, was um, in the desert during a rave. Went out there in a clown van with, like, 10 people I didn't know. Big mistake. Big mistake. Not the clown van. That was kind of a mistake. Pissed a couple people off that were tied to the clown van. But one of the fucking cardinal rules of tripping, right? Especially if it's one of your first trips or whatever. Only trip around people that you trust and that you know fairly well or trust. At least know. You know, trust comes with knowing someone. But I was around like nine people I'd never hung out with before and we're in the back of this clown van that I had randomly whole other story but I had a clown van Dr. Wiggles wiener wagon right there and uh, we got out we went to this thing called Moon Tribe have you heard of Moon Tribe it was cool at first the music was kind of shitty I'm not big into electronic you know <laughs> You know, I mean, I love electronic music, but that is just like shitty EDM fucking house, whatever the fuck. I don't even have the vocabulary, nor do I want to even learn about it, okay? So that kind of made it shitty. Then I was tripping around people that I didn't know. I dropped liquid acid, liquid acid. Usually it's like on paper or on like a, you know, a sweet tart or something or a mentho mentoid, mentoid? Menth, menth, 
Altoid? I don't know. Uh, one of those things, candies, you can put it on a lot of things. But I had liquid. This dude I didn't know that came with in the clown van, he just dosed me. Multiple drops in the dark at like 2 a.m. 2 a.m. is when I started. So it was crazy. I saw the sunrise in the desert and it was beautiful and we were dancing. And it was amazing, like time slowed down. It fucking slowed down, completely just slowed down. Like, holy fuck. And it was gorgeous and the sun started coming up and like, I mean, I love the desert. There's something magical inherently about the desert, you know? And uh, it was awesome. And like, even though the mu music was like pretty shitty, like <laughs> I got past that and it was cool. And you know, that was the best part, right? Like the sunrise and the dancing. And, and then we went back to the, the van because that's everyone's just hanging out in the clown van, just like snorting coke, snorting ketamine, just like doing drugs. And uh, we go back to the clown van and I end up just staying there. And then all of a sudden, like, it's like noon the next day, you know, and I'm like still tripping. I'm like, Holy shit. And then I look at my only friend I know, Jesse. I knew one person there out of like the 10 people. And I'm like, bro, didn't you say we were going to like go back today? Like I was going to be able to make my softball game. Oh, you weren't serious, were you? No, shit. I'm like we're not making it back, dude. Everyone's like still doing drugs. I'm like, I'm still tripping on acid right now. Like I can't drive. I can't. And then I, s I skipped the most dramatic part of the story, which was. Well, I guess that kind of happened the whole time, but um, there were these people across from us in this big truck, and they had a, unfortunately, they had a fucking nitrous oxide tank, like a six-foot fucking tank of nitrous oxide gas that they were, <laughs> in balloons all night, all fucking night. Blowing up balloons, huffing, taking whippets. Fucking whippets. I don't understand whippets, especially now. Maybe if you were in the fucking bush in Australia or in the fucking middle of nowhere, Africa, and had no other drug, then do a whippet. But if you're at like a fucking festival rave, and there's like all the other good drugs, why do you need to do a whippet too? Really? I just don't understand that. So people are doing whippets all night. The fucking and then so I'm like on acid and I keep hearing that song and it's song sound and it's freaking me out. It's not a song. It's the opposite of a fucking song. It's like ah, that's like a someone's every time I hear that it's like a soul dying or something, and it starts to freak me out. And then you know they're like, hey, do you want to come hit this balloon? And I'm like, nah, I'm good. And so my friends are hitting it at first and like they got kind of high, I guess, on it. I don't know. I've done whippets before, but it's just stupid and. And then later they're like, guys, uh, man, that tank, I'm pretty sure that tank's empty. So people are just like lining up and huffing air. But they, they think that there's like something in there. But I think it's just like a placebo thing because I just huffed like two or three like full balloons and I should be like passed out right now, but I'm not. So like it's obviously not all there, you know. So that was interesting. Um, don't do whippets. I'm not a big whippet fan. Never have been. Trying to just not do drugs in general, guys. Trying to be like the sober guy. <laughs> no, not the sober guy, but just just uh, just do them more just more intentionally, you know? Like, okay, Saturday evening, oh, I'm at a concert to see Paul McCartney. I'll smoke a joint, you know? Like, something like that versus like, oh... It's fucking Monday at fucking 9.30 a.m. Time to get high, you know. In my head, when I, when I say that, I just hear, loser, 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 loser. But that's 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 not me. That's someone. That's, that's my dad. He's in my head. Get out of there, dad. Get out of there. It's fine. Guys, it's fine. I'm doing fine during quarantine. I'm actually thriving. I fucking ran four miles today. I cleaned the kitchen. It looks fucking spotless. Um, I'm going to have a new roommate move in soon. I'm excited. She should be cool. My other roommate was, uh, you know, kind of hard to deal with sometimes. But uh, I have the house to myself now, which is cool. So I'm just going to party naked by myself on Zoom and uh, see what I can make of it, you know. But... Uh, you know, I really have the travel bug right now. I really want to travel. I want to just see, like, which, you know, countries open up 
soonest and that are like have the least amount of cases and just fucking go there. Like, why not? Should I just go to South Korea? Like, why not? Fuck it. If they got that shit under control and bars are open and shit, like, fuck yeah, dude. I'll go. I'll fucking go. Now's the time to go. But tickets are cheap, you know? Fuck, man. Fuck. You know? It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> this is a new, um, whew, that one hit me. You know, when it hits you hard, it just gets you. And then it's like, blah, 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 blah. this is a new section of our show. That's very important. Okay. It's called audience mail. And it's where we just review letters that we get in the mail from our fans. And, uh, so I'm going to read this one now. From someone named Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Thanks for tuning into our show. Thanks for writing us. Let's see what that says here. Oh, fuck. Ah! I'm so fucking clumsy sometimes, guys. It says, Dear Travis, I love your show. Listen to it every week. Um, I wanted to know how, what products do you use for your hair? It looks so great and glistens so well on camera. Oh, wow. Thank you, Virginia. Um, I want to know where I can buy the products near me. I live in Missouri. Uh, sign Virginia. Please call me. Let me know. I want my hair to look like yours. Uh, well, thank you, Virginia. I that, That's very sweet of you. Um, and actually, the truth is I just use basically... The standard white trash sort of Trader Joe's cheap shit on my hair, you know? I um, I go through a lot of struggles and like back and forth. Like, should I shampoo it? Should I not shampoo it? It feels good to shampoo it, you know? I'm used to shampooing it. I like to shampoo my hair, okay? It feels good physically and psychologically, okay? On, on my head, it's like a scalp massage. I give myself a scalp massage, okay? But uh, I guess turns out you don't really need to shampoo your hair. So uh, I've been trying to just maybe conditioner it uh, if I if I need to. But um, you know I guess there's like a week of like oiliness and then you get over that somehow and you can get rid of whatever with like conditioner supplementalness. But uh, I don't know. It just feels so good to wash my hair. But I just use regular products. So um, you know. It's just, it's basically God-given hair. Like, I was blessed to, for it to look this good. Like, it's not, like, product that makes it look this good. It's, like, genetic, you know what I mean? So, sorry, Virginia. Okay, let's do another one here. Let's do another one. This is from David. Hi, David. Thank you for writing to Talking Out Loud. Hey, Travis. Uh, please turn to the other side. Okay. I um, love your show. Wanted to know what your biggest fear was. Okay. Um, wow, that's all. That's all he said. Okay. Uh, my biggest fear. Um, probably suffocating. Suffocating. So that would that would just. I mean, not necessarily drowning, but suffocating would suck. I like have I had childhood asthma. I maybe still have like minor asthma, so that's like a a fear, right? And a you know relatives with lung cancer that died and stuff because of like lung related diseases. So yeah, like not being able to breathe is a is a fear for sure. That and um, probably just ruining my life on drugs is another big fear. But um, and they could possibly be combined, which would be like really bad, really shitty. Thanks for that shitty question, David. Uh, let's move on to one more. We got one more. Uh, this is from Michael. Hi, Michael. Appreciate it uh, very much. God, they all just, they're all just professionally, you know, professionally enveloped. <laughs> oh, man. Looks like this guy just emailed me his financial statement. Um, damn, $114,000. Um, there's no message. Uh, uh, that might 
might have been a mistake. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's the end of audience mail. I hope you enjoyed that segment. Um, you know, I'm just trying to keep it real, guys. Keep it real. And uh, fuck, man. I mean, it's 42 minutes, but you know what? I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll do an hour long. I don't fucking care, man. I don't fucking care. And I just want to roll with it, okay? I'm just going to fucking roll with it. Don't try to confine me into your little fucking 30-minute box, okay? Fuck you. I have so much anger inside me. Oh man, what was I gonna say? I was on something that was gonna be good. I don't know, sometimes I'm just like pissed off for no reason, you know? You ever get pissed off for no reason? You just like wake up, <laughs> you're like making coffee, you're just like pissed. You're like, oh, it's gotta be the coffee. I just haven't had my caffeine yet. So you have your cup of coffee, and then afterwards, you're, like, still kind of pissed. You're like, God damn it, mother... Fucking son of a... Fucking... God damn it. And then you're like... And then you actually start to think about it around lunchtime. You're like, what am I even fucking pissed about? You can't... Can't figure it out. Can't figure it out. That was me the other day. The other few days, you know? So that happens. It's weird when that happens, though, right? You're just like, ah, God fucking... Damn it, motherfucker. Like, and then maybe that's probably more uh, common during quarantine, of course, because we our routines are thrown off, you know. But uh, got to say, man, that's the only thing you can really uh, count on in life is change, right? I mean, I just read a couple books that were pretty awesome. One was called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, and the other was called, um, it was just a book by Pima Chodron. This uh, like 65-year-old female Buddhist named Pima Chodron. She's really great. And a lot of it, you know, is just basic Buddhism stuff. But it's like, uh, you know, having resistance to change is like the source of suffering. Resistance to change is the source of suffering. The only thing you can count on in life is change. So to resist change is just idiotic and uh, masochistic, basically, because you're just causing pain to yourself. So if you like pain, that's cool. But uh, if you don't and you wonder why, I feel like shit. Let's talk about your metrics for how you measure value in this life. You know, like what are your values? Do you have shitty values? Are you, are you going for something tangible or are your values more intangible, you know, like integrity or honesty or self-expression or creativity, you know? I like that cheesy shit, the cheesy books, you know, the self-help books, the Buddhism, the wake up, wake the fuck up, the consciousness books, you know, stuff that you can apply in your normal life right away. I mean, I can get into fiction and stuff like that, and I enjoy all that as well, not necessarily you know gonna read like a lord of the rings book or anything like that but uh i like reading i hope you guys like reading i hope my audience likes reading books if not please unsubscribe no i'm just kidding i need your subscription i'm desperate i got like not even 30 not even 30 subscribers guys it's okay it's not about the numbers it's about quality over quantity okay so the, all those 30, 28 subscribers are like, each subscriber is worth like a thousand regular subscribers. You know what I mean? You guys are dope. 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 It's fucking dope. I love you. Do yourself a favor. Do your friends a favor. Do your mothers and fathers and family members a favor. Just reach out to them and be like, hey, I love you. Fuck you. Hey, I love you. You're an asshole. You're a dickhead. But fuck you. I love you. You know, or whatever. Excuse me. Whatever it is you do. You know, that's how we talk in Nebraska. You know, it's like, fuck you. I love you. Actually, no, it's not. It's just my abusive upbringing. But still, you know, it's all the same. However you want to communicate, just spread your love. It's all about... Reaching out and staying connected and realizing that there is no I in you. There is no me. 
We're it's we're all part of the same network. We're it's us. I am we. There is no I. It's just you guys just don't understand. You ain't as high as me, maybe, but um, you will be someday, man. Uh, over and out, and uh, fucking, I love you, and like, fucking, email me, motherfucking. Travis Nebraska at gmail.com if you have something to fucking say.